This is the seventh in the walkthrough series on the Voltage Lab 2. And in this, we're gonna take a look at some of the utilities that we've not seen yet in any of the other videos. So starting from the left-hand side, we kick off with sample and hold. And what we notice straight away here, perhaps, is that we've got a noise output. So we can use that as a noise source, but just to show you that it's noise. There you go. So if I turn this up now, we've got sample and hold going into the FM of oscillator one. Sample and hold clocked by the internal clock. So patching the internal clock into function generator one and using that to control dynamics processor one. But we don't need to use the noise, we can use something else. Instead of using noise, we'll use oscillator two sawtooth and that's much more predictable. So we'll take the out and that and put that into the sample in. So you're getting a definite drop there on you. It's more like a ramp than a sawtooth, like the graphic. And there goes up, but it's actually coming down. If we and we've got a clock input as well, so we can do something funky with the clock input. Let's use these two function generators to do something, shall we? Let's um, use the LFO to trigger function generator one. And let's use all these trigger conditions to do something funky with number two. Let's take that off sustain. Let's just turn that up to give us something a bit more interesting. So the output of that is going into the clock. Let's turn this up to see what's happening. Next up then, we've got effects, and this is a ring modulator and a bit crusher. The ring modulator is taking in oscillator one and oscillator two. And if we have a listen to that, so let's just put this into dynamics one. So the input is the sine of oscillator two and the sine of oscillator one. We do have an input there to change that. So let's make it a bit more spiky, shall we? Let's take in the seed of two. So that's it with the square. Or let's take it with a bit of reflection on the square. See if it makes any difference playing around with the um, full symmetry. Not too much, because it's listening to frequencies, isn't it? But as we have those harmonics, we're doing something different there. Lovely. Really like this. And then we've got the bit crusher, so let's take the output from there. Beautiful. Say beautiful, lovely and clangy. Again, we can change that input. So put the crush in, let's take it from, let's try the seeds. Not getting too much difference there. Let's go to the reflected. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, and I've been really hammering that ring one, to be honest. Okay, let's move along then to the next lot of processors, and that's the um, the audio CV processors here. We've got an amplifier and we've got an attenuator. If you watch the function generator um, video, that's number three in the series, you'll have seen me put in a TR626 into the amplifier in order to get a large enough signal for it to drive the function generator one as an envelope follower. So we've seen that already. If you haven't seen that, do take a look at video three. And then we've got an attenuator and that takes us from minus five volts to plus four volts. And you'll see me using this as well. Just to demonstrate a point, if you haven't seen videos one or two where we use this on the oscillators. So take the attenuator out. Let's put it into the Tambra CV in. Turn the Tambra CV up. And interesting with these is when you take it below zero, it goes silent. So you can use that as a sort of almost like a delay effect. When you're using an LFO, not when you're using this. And the amplifier goes into the attenuator by default. So these are just really useful tools to have at your disposal. Particularly if you want to reduce the size of an incoming signal or amplify one. And then finally, I will just take out these. And bringing us to the end of this demo, we've got a splitter and we've got a mix set stroke splitter. So signal in, two signals out, and then we've got two ins and two outs. So these are basically two mults and they come in very handy indeed, but not too much to demo there, is there? So that brings me to the end of video seven. There you go.